My name is Idris Mohamed. I'm a researcher on extreme terror banditry and transnational organized crime. I base in Sokoto State, Northwestern region, part of Nigeria. That sounds strange to many, but can you let us in to what you have done in recent days? Okay, I recently organized youth intergenerational dialogue in Zampara where I invited young Flani people from different communities in Zampara and also 15 young houses Flani from Hausa communities where we discuss on issue of banditry and the way out we are going to um, uh, come to the end of banditry because now we realize that so many other crime actors are coming to the Northwest region to get recruitment through uh, taking advantage of the banditry conflict in the region. So we have that um, youth generational dialogue in order to block the recruitment process of young people join extreme group. And in regard to this um, um, program, it is a nice program because it houses different policy makers, um, uh, peace building practitioners, flying herders, as well as government agencies to discuss on the way from forward looking at the insecurity situation in the Northwest region. Um, because there are a lot of negative nar narratives, stereotypes and stigmatization against Flani tribes because now it becomes a, a order of the day in the northern Nigeria whereby once, once you see a Flani man or you, woman you will think them as a bandit and this create a lot of discrimination against them. So this kind of forum or this kind of gathering will give the voice will give the voice of the voiceless to speak there and so that people will realize that there are good people among the flying people and understand that this kind uh, activity that is happening is not only for flying but it's a criminality against the whole Nigerians, not only flying tribes. Number one is poor governance, number two is injustice and number three is climate change. Um, let me start with poor governance. Government refused to invest heavily in education because so many people are living in ungoverned spaces where they have no access to schools, no have access to hospitals, I have and no access to um, dividend of democracy. So there is no way you will talk to these people to understand you the way other literate and learned Nigeria will understand. And number two is poor um, uh, policing also. There is this issue of poor policing, but our borders are porous, no, poor, no good policing that will map uh, people that are coming in and out of the border. And also issue of climate change, if you look at the, the border communities with the Nigeria Republic, especially in Katsuna, Zamfara, Sokoto, Kebbi, you see how desertification is coming taking over our farmland, taking our lakes and rivers. So this also pushed so many vulnerable young people that are only living through rearing animals to take arms in the region. So these are the things that cause the conflict. Looking at what you just mentioned, are you going to blame only government? What of the leaders, the elders of those environments? The reason why I always blame government because it's government that will talk to the leaders to understand. Yes, because you know the traditional leaders, the religious leaders um, um, and the politicians are also part of the people that are pushing these young people to carry arms because they are always talking on their behalf and they are getting support and other things that's supposed to be going down to the communities but they are pocketing it because of corruption and this also push so many people to took arms because they have no access to government so that government will understand them. So I have to blame leaders also, especially traditional as well as the politician in the northern Nigeria. So the way forward is to put hands together, especially now the forthcoming election is coming, to elect the competent people that will understand the current situation and come up with a possible solution. Number one, we need to educate people. We need to enroll the young ones in school so that we we'll catch them young. Number two, we need empowerment. Number three, we need people that are seeking for justice. Let, let be justice be done because there are people that are claiming that they have been marginalized, you know, 
and there are a lot of existing grievances. So non-kinetic approach like peace building, dialogue, negotiation, mediation, should also put in place. This will go along line with kinetic approach by deploying security personnel also to some places who people who reduce to drop their arms. Also, putting non-kinetic and kinetic approach together will help in bringing solution to the problem. They are still... Number one, these people are no longer asking for money now because they are asking for government to release some of their members so that they will release them. So, you know, government is always giving excuse that they are not going to give money, they are not... Go the relatives of this victim will not understand. I think government is to bring... If there is any way government that can bring the king, king's pin into table of negotiation so that they will understand their demand if there is any softer way government can make their demand so that the victims can reunite with their family members.